All right, there we go. Well, thank you ladies for being on tonight. I'm so excited for tonight's call. I have been excited for weeks ever since I had the courage to reach out to Claire and ask her to speak. I've been following her for a while. Um, she has been on leaderboards for our team for a while. And she's one of those people who are like, who is that? Like, what, what is she doing? And you go and stalk her on social media and you're like, wow, like this is just, it's, she's very captivating. And um, she's within our doubt. She's under, um, she's one of Mackenzie's diamonds and Mackenzie's like a few levels below me. So she's, I'm like a great, great, great grandma of playing coach to her pretty much, but she's down there and she pops up, you know, in my back office all the time. And I was like, okay, I need to reach out to her and give her the spotlight and, um, you know, just give her that chance to step up in leadership and, and lead a call because she is putting in the work and she is getting results. And I asked her a few weeks ago to speak and then Gee, what happened last week, Claire? <laughs> she hit diamond in her business. So we popped another diamond within our team. It is so crazy. We popped, I popped two personally sponsored diamonds in December alone. And then we have two more super close. And then with, you know, everyone else's teams, it's just, we are booming. And it's so fun to sit back and see everybody so excited and shouting each other out and congratulating each other. Oh, and I will put her IG handle, you guys, in the chat once she starts talking so y'all can go stalk her too. Um, make sure, you know, you shout her out and thank her for sharing her heart with us tonight when she is done and all that fun stuff. But um, yeah, I'm going to stop talking. I'm just going to hand it over to her. I know she has a beautiful presentation for us tonight and I'm so excited um, to learn from her just as you guys are, you know, always be a student. So get your notes ready um, to take notes and you can type questions in the chat as usual and she can answer them at the end or you can unmute yourself and ask um, at the end as well. So anyway, thank you so much, Claire, for joining us tonight and for being our guest speaker. I appreciate you taking the time to put together a beautiful presentation and to be here and to share your heart with us. So take it away, girl. Thank you so much. That was like the nicest intro ever. I am literally like, I, when you say that you were like, got the courage to ask me to be on this, I'm like, I'm, this is my first time ever speaking on a call. I, this is only my sixth month in the business. So, um, I mean a call on another team. I've spoke on our team calls, but this is only my sixth month and I feel like it's like still my first because I'm learning so much so fast and so just hearing you say that is like the nicest thing ever. Um, so for those of you guys that don't know me, I know Janine's on here, which it makes me feel good to see a face I know. Um, but um, I, my name is Claire and I have been a coach only, like I said, for six months. And I think my story is really different from a lot of people in that I quit my job before starting this whole thing. A lot of people like build up to that and I literally was like, I'm all in. Um, I actually quit my job before I even knew what Beachbody was, but I quit my job to become an online coach. And um, I started just like paying for all these really expensive online coaching certifications and I would finish them and be like, what do I do? Like, I, I still don't know how to get clients. I know all this stuff about nutrition and um, workouts and form and all these things, but I still would have no idea how to talk to people. I was still scared to talk to people. Um, and so I saw a post from McKenzie about like hiring and I was like, this could be it, but it also could be a scam. Luckily I had no idea what network marketing even was. So, um, if I had, I probably would have been a lot more skeptical, but I'm glad I didn't even, I had no idea. I didn't know what Beachbody was. I didn't know what network marketing was. So I'm very thankful for that because someone probably would have given me some bad thing about it that would have made me not want to do it. And that would have been bad because it's amazing. Um, so um, I've only been doing this, like I said, for six months, but I feel like I've learned so much. And like I said, I did a lot of like really expensive training courses and none of them taught me even nearly close to what I've learned in the last six months in this business. So um, the PowerPoint that I, that I put together to share with you guys is kind of just the things that I've decided to really like hone in on in 2019, because my first six months doing this, I was kind of just like, Oh my God, like learn and try and do, and things were working. And 
that's great, but it's a business and I needed to like sit down and be like, okay, how am I going to run this business? Because towards the end of the year last year on my, my fifth month, I'm like starting to get really overwhelmed because you hear all these calls and all these top coaches and everybody telling you all these different things. And I, I'm somebody who's like, okay, she's doing it that way. So I got to do it that way. And when you think like that and you're watching like tons of different coaches, it's terrifying. You're like, I can't do all these things. So I decided to sit down and figure out what is going to work for me. I've learned so much. So it's time to like sit down and figure out what are the things that I can do that will work for me. And so far this month, I've hit my highest success club and it's only halfway through the month and I'm already at my highest ever. And I truly think it's because I have been focusing on what works for me instead of spending a lot of time trying to like learn what's working for other people. Um, so again, that's what I want to share with you guys on this slideshow is just kind of like the top things that I've been doing in 2019 that have really been working. So I am going to share my screen. Can you guys see it? Cool. Okay. So I just put it as 2019 refresh because that's what I decided to do for the year is just start fresh and see what's working for me. Um, so how do I go to here? The first thing that I had was, oh, it's not letting me go to this slide. Hold on. There we go. Okay. Knowing your why. I think it's cut out a little. Okay. So for me, I had heard so many people say like, you need to know why you're in this business. And I didn't really take that seriously. I was just like, oh, because you know, I want to have a family someday and be able to spend time with them. And there were all these different things. And it was again, pulled from what everyone else was saying they were in this business for. Um, so I, I got this from a book and she gave some really good questions to sit down and just write the answers down to. Um, and it was like life changing for me and it completely changed everything in the business for me because I had to sit there and truly think of why I'm in this business. So the first question is, what is your why? Why do you want or need to be successful with this? Um, so that, I mean, that's obviously up to each individual. And again, I was totally pulling that from what everyone else was saying they were doing in this. So when I actually sat down and thought about my own self, why I'm doing this, it was completely life changing for me. Um, and then the second thing is why is being successful with this business important to you? Um, and then third, if you're as successful as you hope to be with the business, what will your life look like in five years? Um, and that one was massively eye opening for me, like writing down if I really hit the goals I want to hit, in this business, where am I going to be in five years from now? Um, and for me, writing it down is what's like huge. Cause you know, you can put these things in your head, but like once you actually write it down, it's massive. Um, and then the fourth was if you are not successful with this business, how will you feel? So that was the one that really did it. Like we all think about the good, but it's actually important to think about if you're not successful with this, how are you going to feel like genuinely? And the things I wrote were like really depressing. Like I'm going to feel horrible about myself. I'm going to feel like a failure and that just can't happen. So I have to be successful in this business. Um, and then the fifth one is similar to that. If you're not successful with this business, what will your life look like five years from now? And again, like I wrote it out, but it can't happen. I can't, you know, go back to working in corporate like I was before and not be happy in my life. So for me, I wrote the answers down to every single one of these questions and I decided to read it every single morning just to remind myself like why I'm doing this and what's going to happen and how I'm going to feel if I'm not successful at it. So that's my first thing that I've changed this year is just knowing my why truly and not just going along with everyone else's why's and saying that's why I'm doing this. Um, next is managing your time or managing my time. I was just winging it. Um, and like I said, I do this full time, which is sounds like really, I don't know. Like, I think a lot of people are like, I want to do this full time. And I realized like they all seemed to be getting more work 
completed than I was or as much as I was. And I'm like, I'm sitting here all day doing this and this girl's doing it part time. Why are, why am I like not getting more done? Well, I was winging it. I wasn't time blocking. I wasn't managing my time because I felt like I didn't have to. So, I mean, for those of you that like work full time or part time or anything like that, I'm sure hopefully you already do time blocking because it's kind of necessary in that case. But for me, it was really like a learning thing like, oh, wow, I, I need to manage my time with this business. Um, so time blocking, I didn't even know what that meant. I had to look it up, <laughs> um, but literally like breaking the day down by the hour. I, I write six, seven, eight, nine, ten, like all the way till I want to be done working for the day. And I fill in even down to like the minutes. Like if something's only going to take me 30 minutes, then I still put in what I'm going to do the other 30 minutes. Because if I don't do that, I'm just going to get distracted and waste a ton of time. And, you know, working this full time, I was finding that I would be in my office all day. And then I would feel like I got nothing accomplished because... <laughs> I mean, I obviously love doing the graphics and I could sit and do that for days straight and not even sleep. And that was almost happening. So I was like, I need to, you know, do the things that I don't want to do first. And I personally have been hearing this a lot lately um, after I realized it, but do the things you don't want to do first, like inviting and then do the fun stuff because that is like, that has changed everything for me. Um, and then another thing is planning out your whole week on Sunday evenings. Um, I just started doing this and it has been amazing. And I literally sit down and I write, fill in those hours for the whole week so that I know like, you know, the, like this call, I, ha I put that in and the things that you know you have to do, put them in there and then fill it in with the stuff that you know is going to build your business after that. Um, and then having a morning routine. That's that I started doing a while back, but that one is huge. It's kind of hard to figure out what, what works best as far as a morning routine goes. Like I tried a couple of different things and they weren't, just weren't working for me. So that's just whatever works for you, like meditation or praying or whatever you, whatever makes you feel good to start your day. Like you're in control of the day. Um, next is put your blinders on. And I think it's funny because, uh, I made this slideshow a couple days back, but this morning on the national wake up call, if you guys heard Ashley Molstad, it was really good, but she was saying just this, like, you need to stop worrying about what all the other coaches are doing. And that's kind of where I started with this whole thing is like, it can be really easy to be like, oh, she's so successful, so I need to do what she's doing. But you have to just stop worrying so much about what the other coaches are doing. I think it's great when you first, first start to soak a lot of that stuff in. But for me personally, it just started to get the best of me. Like every coach does things different. So how am I going to do all those things? So I you know, again, I've already gone over that at the beginning is that's what's been huge for me is just figuring out the things that really work for me, putting my blinders on, you know, watching a training call, obviously still every day, but taking the pieces that are going to work for me out of it and not trying to re plan everything so that I can use this new system. I just watched a training on, um, and I said, if you try to run your business, how every other coach runs theirs, you're going to get overwhelmed because that's just what happened to me. Um, and then also, I think it was funny because Ashley Molstead said the same thing on the call this morning, but if you need to mute or unfollow people, just do it. Like I've had to mute certain accounts because I would find myself just scrolling their page or watching their stories for so long, like click, 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 and just watching. And I'm like, oh my God, like 15 minutes just passed on one person and nothing really, you know, that crazy came of it. I just saw their story and their profile and it just, I, I had, I realized I had to mute a lot. And for me, I don't like to go unfollow people because there's nothing against them. I love following them and that's why I want to watch their stuff. But so for me, muting them was huge. It has changed everything. Like at the top, when you see the stories, um, and you see all those ones that you love to watch because they come up first on purpose, mute them if you have to. Even if you love watching them, if it's not helping you in your business, mute it and then maybe at night when you're just chilling, take it off mute. But during the day when you're trying to work, 
we work on Instagram or, you know, we should be, or I do. And it's such a distraction. It's like, it's really hard to have to work through Instagram when there's stuff on there that you get really sucked into. So for me, that was a huge thing was just muting the accounts for now or for when I need to focus. Um, the next thing is setting and reverse engineering goals. That was like a huge eye opener for me. I, again, I didn't even know what it meant when people kept saying, oh, reverse engineer your goals. I was like, I have no, I don't even know what that means, but cool. Like, I think I do that in my head, maybe. Um, and then I actually looked up what it meant because I started to be like, I just, by the end of last year, I got really overwhelmed and I honestly wanted to give up on the whole thing. So I knew I had to like figure out like, what I really want out of this. So I ended up just reverse engineering my goals without even realizing what I was doing. But, um, so the way that I did it was I just thought, okay, what are my top three goals this year? I want to be a five star by the end of the year, which is crazy. Um, but when I broke it down, it wasn't as crazy as I thought, like, okay, within three months, I need to be a one or two by six months. I need to be a three or four. And then by 12 months or by nine, I need, okay, I'm bad with numbers, but you guys get it. So you break it down by number with the three, six, nine, and 12 months. Like that, when that's broken down, you really only need one star every three months. That's not that crazy. You know, like it, it feels crazy when you just see the five star at the end of the year and you're like, oh no, that's that's too much. Like, you know, that's overwhelming. It's a great goal, but I'm never going to be the one to reach it. Well, when you break it down, it's really not that hard. I mean, it's not easy, but when you really break it down by not just months, but by weeks and then by days and you figure out, okay, well, where do I need to be in three weeks? Or where do I need to be in by the end of this week? How many coaches do I want to add to my team? So it's really like a lot of numbers and breaking things down, but um, it's definitely worth it. Like definitely, da literally down to how many invites you need to be sending in order to get this many coaches added to your team, in order to get this many business builders, in order to get this many diamonds. Like it just, you have to break it all the way down. Um, and I never really realized that, but when I did it, that's when I started to be like, okay, like my goal is massive. I have to hit success club 30 on average every month to hit my goal. So, you know, this month I'm coming in hot. I'm ready to do that because I know in order to get to that five star, I have to hit a certain success club every month and be adding a certain amount of coaches to my team every month. So, um, you know, I, like, like I've been saying, I still feel really new to this. So a lot of you guys probably know all this stuff, but, um, for me, like if there's any new coaches watching or anything, I, this is the kind of stuff that would have been great to hear, um, when I had first started. Um, oh, and then this is one that, um, I love. So this is one that I actually have been not like realized right from the beginning is you really need to be confident in what you're offering people. Uh, because at first, like, when you're new, you don't really know yourself what a boot camp is, unless you start out as a boot camper. I jumped into this straight up as a coach. So at the beginning, I was inviting people to these boot camps and I didn't even know what it was. So it was really hard to explain to people like what this is that I'm trying to get them to spend money on. And the same thing goes for the coaching opportunity. Like you need to fully understand what it entails. And you also need to have like, a solid boot camp set up and Janine actually is the one that really kicked my booty into gear with this. She went crazy and had like the most amazing boot camp ever. She made a calendar for it and had like stuff for every day and I had never done that before and seeing that is what made me realize like she must be so confident when she's inviting people to her boot camp because it's amazing and she has it so well planned out and she totally knows what's going to happen every single day, how it's going to start, how it's going to end. When she's inviting, like it probably comes off so confident because she fully knows what it is that she's offering. And so that got me to do the same thing. I was like, I am, you know, we got to be making calendars. I didn't even ever do that. Like it was just a, winging it thing and every day I would post a check-in or whatever but 
when you set it up on a calendar and you have all these extra fun goodies you're adding in and giveaways and it's planned out, when you're inviting to it, you're actually really excited because you put your heart and soul into it. So have solid boot camps. I think that was actually- And I want to interrupt you for a second because yeah. creeping on your stories, I've seen your little boot camp, not sneak peek, but like, you know, you show your work and stuff as you're, you're creating yeah. it and it's gorgeous. Like your little cover photo with, I mean, I don't think, I don't even care what it would say. It's just the looks are amazing, but like you have it broken down by like topic, I think, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, yes. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and you have yeah. it, you have like the little cover photos or, um, not cover photos. Sorry. Um, yeah, the cover how, photo that's so yeah, the cover photo, that's like your your count, your weekly structure, but also like I think you had like um, album covers or something or like your fit kit or whatever, you know what I mean? Things like that. And it was just, it was like, wow, like how can you not be confident when you have something that gorgeous? And I'm like, I need to almost pay you in a way to create one that I can just offer my team to use. Like you guys can use this and, you know, edit it as you wish yeah. or maybe leave the writing off of it, but you do like the the actual like um uh artwork of it you know what i mean and then just yeah. present that to my team and be like hey use this just to set them up for success or that would be something to set a new coach up with for success mm -hmm. be like here you can copy you know just plug in you know your daily themes or whatever you need to do um to make it your own but they just kind of have that little bit of confidence in those like just the images and the structure yeah. of it really is kind of their bread and butter because you hit the nail on the head when you said, I mean, it all, the confidence will feed into everything. You're going to have fear of inviting, which is going to hold you back from growth, which is going to make you want to quit the business, or you're going to have burnout because you don't have that confidence to invite because your groups or your, your team or whatever it is, you don't have much. And that's okay because every coach starts somewhere. And like, you know, this is this amazing how it's your learning process kind of on paper because this is almost like a new coach training in a way. Like you could use these slides as like, you know, leadership is not, you know, it's different from person to person, but it's pretty much like these are my failures and this is what I learned from. So, you know, I'll save you yeah. a couple, you know, yeah. face dives into the cement and you can try it, you know, this way if you would like, but it's just, you know, for me creeping on you and, and been watching you and just seeing, you know, how you show up in your business and how you show up on Instagram, knowing that it's your main platform and how you show that part as an outsider looking in, that's very appealing. And I don't know if it is to everybody else, but that could be something to think about. Like, are you showing your people what like your graphics and what your group looks like? And uh, mm -hmm. I know like Mackenzie will do this and Janine will do this. You guys will just sit there and scroll through a post or but do like a post of like um, a sweaty selfie or um, post a gif of how you feel today or something. And you guys yeah. will just sit there and film it and scroll yeah. through it on your computer. And so people can see other people's comments and they can maybe read their comments and their mm -hmm. photos and stuff like that. And that really creates FOMO. So I yeah. just wanted to say that is something for all you guys to maybe take note of or when you go and stock Claire and Janine and Mackenzie, if you don't already, I'm sure you guys probably already do as it is. Um, success leaves clues, you guys. Okay. And there's a reason I reach out to diamond. Well, she wasn't diamond when I reached out to her, but it's just amazing that she is. You've hit diamond pretty quickly with it, this business. So that's a huge accomplishment in itself. And you are new, but I love how you have ownership of, of your business. Like, like, look at this. Like if, a new person popped on this, they would not know you were only six months into this business. Like you have ownership and you have confidence. But when you look at tips from diamonds, I've been trying to get them to speak more and more on these calls and, you know, r raise their leadership lid, so to speak. And just to hear it's like she said, it might all be stuff you've already heard, but isn't that a huge clue? You know what I mean? Like you don't have to do anything crazy different or, or brand new to be successful. Like all these diamonds, we've had so many diamonds host calls recently. And it is, when I look back at my notes, it's just, you know, I try to find a common theme or like, what are they talking about? And it, I'm just kind of a nitpicker that way. I like to look at the facts and stuff. And it, it's so true. You, success leaves clues. So take clues from her, things that are working for her. And like she said, don't burn out on them, but really mm -hmm. try to see where you can, um, level up. You know what I mean? And if you guys really want, um, 
are interested in me talking to her on the side, which I don't want to take more of your time talking about this, but of creating like a fit kit or something that we can create in our team training of graphics or images that you can, we can save either for our team or that they can, you know, she just kind of creates like the background, so to speak. And then your coaches or new coaches can edit them as if let me know or write in the chat. And then I would be more than happy to um, talk with her on the side about that. If that's something you would be interested in. Okay. Sorry. I'm shutting up. Go back girl. You got it. No, you're good. Yeah. I actually like what you're saying about the graphics, like that, like for me, that's my outlet and my favorite thing to do, but there's also good reason behind me putting a lot into the graphics that I do because number one, like you're saying, you can share it with your whole team. And that's what's in my head while I'm creating these graphics. It's like, you know, I, I post them right in the group when I finish them in our team page so that the girls can save them and use them and that saves them time. So like, it's better for me to put in the time and make these graphics so that they can be used over and over and over. It's not like they're just getting used once and it was a huge waste of time. Um, so yeah, it's totally cool that you think of that. Like sharing them with everyone is a huge time saver for a lot of people. Um, so same thing, like what I was just saying for the boot camps, like I wrote here, run a boot camp with one or two coaches. That helps me a lot because it's hard to be responsible for every single daily check-in and every single giveaway. Plus it's more fun for the girls when there's multiple coaches posting and when, when, multiple coaches are running the boot camp, they're creating engagement, which will create more engagement. So running it with a couple people is great. Um, and then creating the calendar, going live. That was something that Janine also did that I was like, duh, like let's go live in our boot camps too and explain things to these girls like right there, raw and real. We were just doing posts like typed out. So going live was huge. Um, and then planning out a prep week, obviously, with lots of info, and that's when it's really great to go live. Um, and then giveaways, weekly challenges, like fun extra stuff other than just daily check-ins. Um, and then really hold the girls accountable. That's something that um, is not as easy as it sounds, but checking in with them and like not just doing the posts in the group, but checking in individually and like really holding them accountable because that's what they're looking for when they sign up for these. Um, and then the same thing for that whole thing, same thing goes for your uh, coaches, like having like a new coach booklet to give them or like a really solid email to send out, like feeling confident when you're inviting to coaching because you know you have really good resources for these girls right off the bat. Like right when they spend their money, you have something really good to give them so that they're not like, oh, should I have not done this? Um, I regret this. She's not talking to me or you know, like I have to wait for this training or whatever it might be, send them something like really solid right off the bat. And not only is that great for them, it'll probably give you more confidence when you're inviting to the coaching because you know you have this super cool thing to give them right when they sign up. So it's like, you trust me, like you want them to do it because you're excited for them to get whatever that is, whatever that email is, the training or whatever it might be. Um, like have a checklist for when you get them signed up. So you're not like, I think like I realized that maybe subconsciously we, if we're not prepared for something, it shows when we're inviting. Like if you're, if you're like, holy cow, that's terrifying to get three new coaches on my team this month. Well, you're not going to add three new coaches because subconsciously you're kind of not really wanting it to happen because you're like, well, am I even ready for that? So prepare yourself for that. If you really want it, like, like if you're telling yourself you want it, prepare yourself for it so that when you're inviting, they realize like she's confident, she's solid, she knows what she's going to do right when I get on board, like she knows what she's offering me. So that has just been huge for me. Um, it's just like being confident in both like adding coaches and running boot camps, like spend the time now on creating these things. And like, again, for the new coaches, I, I love doing the graphics. So I made like a new coach welcome booklet and it has all the stuff that I think obviously will help right off the bat for a new coach. So that's something that's helped me when I'm inviting is like, she's going to be okay. I'm not going to like trick her into something and then she's going to be terrified. Like I have a lot of good info to give her right away. Um, and then making real connections 
this one, especially for um, inviting to coaching was like changed everything for me. Um, I was like really just rushing through everything and I had a lot of girls interested, but I was messaging them and then I would mess up the message or send the wrong name or something horrible like that. And I'm like, I need to set that step back and like slow down. And these are individual girls and they're interested in coaching. Like what does this girl I'm talking to right now need to hear or what's going to help her? Because you're not going to know that unless you ask them questions and chat with them and get to know them. And if you're sending out like copy and paste messages all the time, and like scripts, you're going to probably miss something or not get to know something about that girl that really maybe she, you know, has some certain story that you could totally connect to and really get her to want to do this. And then when she starts, she even has that like feeling of excitement and, oh, this is going to help me with this part of my life that I'm not happy with. Maybe she would have never known that if you never asked a question. So for me personally, like I said, I was really bad with this. I was sending a lot of like um, copy and pasted scripts and like mass emails and things like that. And I decided when I get an application for coaching, like I need to write a whole paragraph about her answers on my app. Like she took the time to go write all those answers on the application. I'm not going to send some mass email to her because, you know, she sat and and went through these questions. She took the time, so I need to take the time too. So yeah, it's very time consuming to write out a paragraph to each girl, but now I know something about her and she knows that I took the time to read her application. So just really making connections, like treating each person as an individual person, um, like going on their profile, obviously like for inviting to the boot camps, we all know, like go on their profile, like a couple pictures, say like, oh, your dog's cute or whatever. Something that you see on there that is going to like tell them that you genuinely do care because we do, we're doing this because we want to help people. Well, we need to like actually care about the person and take the time instead of just shooting out a ton of like copy pasted invites. And again, like part of this whole thing is just take the things that work for you. Like maybe some people have a really like I know some people do do a lot of like copy and pasted Hey Girl messages and that's amazing and they get really good results with that. But for me, I have found like a lot of the people that I get signed up are the ones that I really take the time to like voice clip. That's massive. Like when I'm inviting to coaching, as soon as they finish watching our sneak peek or yeah, our sneak peek. I go voice clip every single one of them. I start out with a voice clip to follow up after a sneak peek always because I noticed like they usually won't reply if you just write like, Hey, did you watch the videos? But if you send a voice clip and you're like, the big thing for me was like telling her why she'll be a great fit for the team. So I would voice clip them and say like, Hey, I just really wanted to make sure I check in with you because I remember on your app, you said you have this huge passion for helping people. And I, you know, I just want to make sure that you get to watch and you get a chance to get one of the five spots that I'm opening up. And, you know, that's going to make her feel like I remembered something from her application and I genuinely want her on the team and all that. So voice clipping, like saying things that are really like with that person, connected to that person. And I think that's all I've got. I see the chat going and I might have talked too long. I don't know. <laughs> Never, never, <laughs> never too long. I definitely do want to open up for questions though, because I'm sure people are going to have some questions for you. Um, so if you guys do have questions, you can put them in the chat <clears throat> or I can just fire away myself like either. <laughs> um, we were just obsessing over your graphics and how cute they were. Um, so you are Okay, in the biz, okay, are you an ex-teacher by chance? Did you used to teach? Janine's a current teacher. Oh, Did was you? I? Yeah, were you? I thought you asked, is anyone on here no, an no, ex-teacher? No, no, no. no, yeah, I know Janine no, is. Like, <laughs> well, Janine's like, no. I'm like, well, Janine, you are a teacher. You kind of no, have I the know. teacher mindset, I feel like. Just the planning, the structure, like that's very 
teacher. That is a huge compliment because <laughs> like, I think like, I know I keep talking about Janine, but I'm like obsessed with her and her I training. Know, right? like, the way girl. she explains things. Like, I, I mean, I'm obsessed. She's one and of my I, people. I think I need to block on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> no, same. I'm like, you know what? I'll mute a lot of accounts, but Janine's one. I'll, I'll never, not. I'll never like, mute you, Janine. <laughs> that's like my reality show for the day. Not that it's like bad, but I'm like, no, I, I got to mean and how her day's going like, and you broke like, a nail the other day girl like I was devastated for you. I'm like oh my gosh that's awful and it's like was on okay you now. guys are seriously the best and I got the nail fixed today oh good <laughs> I love you guys Claire this is seriously so good you just dropped so much I especially love the big why. I think that's really important too. Like when new coaches are coming on, like I really, I took a screenshot of that. Like I want to go post it in my team page and like create like a little assignment for my girls. And I think it would be so beneficial for me to do too. That was gold. Yes. Oh, I'm so glad I did that. I wrote out all those questions in a post and I said, either write your answers in the comments or write them on a piece of paper if it's personal, but you, you have to know this. Like you have to sit down and know this. So that's awesome. That's so cool. Yeah. Um, you guys are just genuine too. When you are on your stories, it's not like, this is awkward. I'm talking to people on my phone. You know what I mean? It's like you guys show up and you're talking as if you're talking to one person and it's literally like you're talking to me. You know what I mean? That's why I'm like, okay, I feel like a complete stalker. Cause I know like you binged your house the other day and you had a yard sale and I'm like, oh, I wish I lived by her. Cause I so want to buy that. Or, you know, things like that. <laughs> this is just weird, but it's so cool though, because you, that's what you want to do for your following is to have them feel so comfortable to reach out to you or hit that, you know, pull button or answer a question or whatever for your application. So, um, my questions are your IG mainly or only for your business. Are you on Facebook as well working your business or are you pretty much just all yeah. IG? So, I mean, IG for recruiting and like converse, like starting conversations, but then Facebook for like boot camps and um, sneak peeks. And right, all that. right. Of course. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, for recruiting your IG, so, um, I don't want to bombard you with too many questions, but I know I, these are kind of the questions that I get a lot personally, and it's really great to just pick other people's brains with. So first of all, um, let's do Instagram tips. Like you're in, okay, let's back it up for a second. Are you into your cold market yet? Yes. And that's where I had that really rough patch was going from like, okay, these are all my friends and they're all either said no or they're in and it's like that's like my biggest fear with that now is for new coaches I'm like I need to figure out something for when they get to that point because it's hard it's rough to go into the cold market for sure right right and some people have a really amazing warm market and like I know for me I had an, uh, an okay one but I pretty much jumped into cold market right away I was one of those like what you don't want to do. I had really quick success, but I don't know how it worked. But like looking back, I'm like, God, I would never tell people to do what I did. It's so gross. But um, I had to dive into my cold market really quickly. And I think that was kind of a blessing because I prefer talking to strangers now. <laughs> like I don't like talking to people that I know. It's almost more uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, and there's just a lot more fish in the sea with it being strangers. And so once you can get comfortable with that, that's great. So now that you're in the cold market, what is kind of your invitation process look like on Instagram? Like how do you show up to work your business? You open up your app. What do you do to work your business? How do you talk to people? Do you have a funnel system? Do you use Google streak to track? Like walk me through start to finish and kind of how that goes. Cause there's a lot of people on this team that are diving into Instagram and they seem to be going in circles. Or they're not really sure. So any tips you have on that? Yeah. So I like I'm, well, I plan my months out ahead of time. So my first week of the month is always promoting for the boot camp, and then like second and third are talking about coaching. So I'm a lot more on like the coaching side of things. Uh, I like recruiting coaches better, maybe because I jumped into this as a coach. I'm not really sure, um, but I I post about coaching a lot. Like I post myself working my little workspace and like things that when I worked in corporate in this ugly office with no windows that I would have seen and been like, Ooh, that's amazing. She gets to go work 
at a coffee shop or whatever. So I share the stuff that I would have been like, you know, caught my eye. Like, how is she able to work in that cool place or that pretty place? Um, so I post a lot about coaching. I post coaching CTAs. The thing that has been like huge for me is promoting my coaching CTAs, like literally paying to promote the, the coaching call to action that has brought in so many applications. And I know some people, they, they don't like doing that or they think it's, you know, bad or whatever. But for me, I, from the beginning of this have been like, I would love for people to reach out to me wanting to do this rather than me having to reach out to them as much. Obviously I still invite, but I get way more success when I put a promotion out there and somebody takes their time to fill out an application. I'm more confident because I know they want this. Um, so for me, that has been like my, my big thing. Um, as soon as I get an application, I put their information into streak. I just started using streak like two weeks ago, but I don't know how I haven't been using it this whole time. Everyone kept saying that they're like, you need to do it. You're going to like it. And I finally, finally did. And I'm like, yep, everyone was right. Like I should have been doing this all along. It makes it so much easier. You don't miss anybody. So that was kind of like jumbled, but basically for me, the big thing that has really helped me genuinely is promoting posts, which isn't the most pretty answer, but that's gotten me a lot of leads, like a lot. Would you be willing to share what um, your promotion would actually look like, like how long you run it and what your ad spend is on it? Yes, I actually made a graphic for it, so oh. I can share. It's like no, a whole book on how to do it. So I'll speak share in our that. love language, guys. Like, this is like <laughs> we have a lot of teachers on here right now. Number one, I think everybody on here is a teacher, <laughs> just about besides Kelly. And it's like oh. having like that image of this isn't just what I did, but like because I took like a a lot of us, I think, took the um God, what was that Facebook ads training, Kelly. Social net team builders, builders. Jesse Reagan. Yeah, social team builder, and um, he has you play around with like what your your target audience, of course, and then what you're boosting, and then your price points, and it's it's like a it's like a science, like you're like trying to figure it out, and so to have kind of like yeah. a rough idea of do you boost it for a shorter period of time for more and for more money or a lower, you know, like all that type of stuff is just um, because honestly. I've, I've boosted some on, on Instagram and they do get a lot better engagement than any of my Facebook ones have gotten, which is great. But at the same time, I can't seem to pinpoint like a price to length correlation, which drives me crazy. Cause like with the business mindset, numbers matter. Right. And so I'm like, mm -hmm. well, do I put in a lot of money in this one for a shorter time or do I kind of stretch it out for, you know, um, yeah. a longer period or whatever. And so um, yeah, that would be great to see that. And just like, you know, your ad copy, cause that is honestly the, the, my best year in this business, I was doing applications and it was before we had, I don't know, was I on Instagram at that? I was on Instagram at that time, but I was mainly Facebook and it was one of those things where you had to, it was another step of like, fill out this application and you send it and 90% of the people wouldn't even fill it out. But I was told only talk to the people that actually fill out your application and it weeds them out, right? It weeds the serious from the unserious and every single person that signed up or sorry, that filled out an application ended up signing up one way or another. But not only that, they were pretty close to always reaching or close to being diamond, if not star diamond. And I signed up some discount coaches that I placed strategically on my strong legs and then poof, you know, they go diamond and you're like, Oh my gosh, I didn't plan for this. But it's part of that if they're willing, like you said, to take the time to share about themselves and to fill out your application, they're pretty much ready to go. And so exactly. if, if you're inviting, if, if you reverse engineer your goals, like she was saying, and you have to invite 50 people a day or 20 people a day, you don't have time to chase every single one of them. So you're doing yourself a favor of sending out the app or, Hey, click the link in my bio and find my app. And then the people that do that, give them your all and chat back with them and cultivate, you know, those relationships because they're going to be gold. But yeah, anything and everything you would love to share with us as far as, you know, graphics, images, or, um, I mean, even the PowerPoint, I would love to even post in our, um, even though this was recorded and people will be able to watch it again, would be great to share 
because that would yeah, be totally amazing. I'll, I'll share the PowerPoint and I'll also share that, um, that thing about the promotions with you guys, because it literally breaks every single one of those things down, like down to how much money to spend, how long to do it, all that. Did you take um, a course but, on Instagram promotions? No. And that's the thing. I'm not sure. Like for me, it's just been working. Um, the way that I, I just somehow figured out how to do it. And the first time I ever did it, I got like 60 applications in a day. Yeah. And I, I know. So then I was like, dude, like I started sharing that with a lot of the girls on the team and I'm like, this is like mind blowing. Like, I mean, I was sitting on my bed with my fiance and I'm like, kept getting notifications, notifications. I'm like, it's working. And like right. all through the night and the next day, like it works. So, I mean, there's no reason why it shouldn't. It's been working right. for me every month. So that was only the last couple months I've been doing that. But, and is that um, where like most of all your conversations come from? Yeah. And I think like you were saying, like when they fill out the application, you kind of know they're serious. And also like back to the confidence thing, like it gives me more confidence. Like right. I'm not scaredly asking, Hey, is this something you might like? Like, no, they right. told me straight up, they want to do this. And in a lot of the applications, they're even answering it. Like it's a something that they might not get to do. So right. they already have that feeling. It puts you in that ownership seat of like you're interviewing them. Like, cause we always say, well, message me and to see if this is a good fit for you. And then you go and beg them to sign up. Well, that's not seeing if it's a good fit. You want to, it's almost like you're the boss and you're interviewing to see, okay, what are your weight loss goals? You know, what do you struggle with? And you're asking all these questions from a, uh, a position of power, like not necessarily, you know, to be, um, you know, have a, a big head or have pride and ego and everything, but like you feel like, it's like if you were to go to apply to Nordstrom or Nike or something, you have to fill out an application. You just can't, like, exactly. they're not going to find yeah. you otherwise, you know? So and that's how I'm like, like, like kind a of wanting them to feel is like I'm yeah. interviewing or I'm applying. It is an application. Like you're applying right. and we always make sure in our sneak peeks to say um, we're only taking however many girls. I've been saying five. I think I'm going to start saying 10, but Definitely. That was like, we talked about that and we, I have a success partner that I work really closely with. And this is what she was really good about is mentioning, like we are only taking five girls each and saying that multiple times. And they were like, it's right amazing. after the video finished and we wrote enrollment is open. They're like, I want to do it. I want to do it. So right. uh, definitely like saying that only yeah. a certain amount of girls are that you created that FOMO through your social yeah. media and then through your sneak peek. And then at the very end of that FOMO, you have that sense of urgency, which is even more FOMO because if they don't get in now, they may not get picked. And they're just like, ah, and that's going to show yeah. you who is ready to go versus when you say, oh, well, we say we only going to take five, but we want, you know, as many as possible. Yeah, we're not. Ne well, I'm not going to say you're never going to turn people away. I have um, decided not to work with people just based off of the conversation or the vibe yeah. or just how, like, I was, I just don't know if this is going to be what you're looking for or whatever. And that's okay yeah. too, because it's better to be honest about it up front. Cause I mean, if you speak to everybody, you're speaking to nobody. And if you bring on all these people that aren't connecting with you on that level, then, um, you know, it's not going to end well. Cause I've ran my business that way and it, you know, it's crashed before. So you really do have to be selective and who's to say, if you say I bring on five, you're the CEO, you're the boss. You can say, Oh, well, I filled my five, but I really like you. I'm going to say, yeah. five too. you know what exactly. I mean? Like, and and that might them. be appealing to them. Like you can even, oh, like, yeah. I love to say when I'm talking to the girls for the coaching opportunity, I love to say like, you know, this is your business. So when they ask questions, I'm like, this is your business. So you can run it however you want. And I think like that to them hearing like, this is my business. Like, I mean, for right. me, like I always wanted to be a business owner. So like hearing something like that, I'd be like, Ooh, like I, this is definitely what I want to do. So right. putting in that little business owner thing and even yep. like you're saying, say, well, you know, uh, you know, I'm deciding that I'm going to open up one more spot because I really think you'll be a great fit or something like right. that. That's yep. awesome. Definitely. And then do you have, um, I know you have an amazing goal this year, which I'm so glad you corrected your self-talk and said, you know, it is, I was about to unmute myself and be like, yeah. <laughs> as I'm so used to doing that with people, like you have to believe it before it could ever be a goal. And, mm -hmm. um, and if you do, then that's a goal you need to set for yourself. I mean, there's so many coaches that have skyrocketed in this business just this past year. 
you know, Amy Rada and Emily Favre come to mind that were at a lower, not lower rank, but lower star diamond rank. And they surpassed the top rank past 15 star within a year, you guys. And this is when people are saying the business is going down or it is saturated or blah, 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 blah. And it's like, no, like, duh, obviously no, it's if you put in the work, you'll get it. So you have a goal to develop diamonds on your team this year. Do you have a strategy or a plan, which I'm sure you will eventually, but as of right now, if you were to sign a diamond tonight, what are your next steps look like to help get them there as quickly as possible? Yeah. So we, a lot like in our little, so myself and my success partner kind of opened up our own team page just because I personally like the feeling of like being in charge, like being the one that the girls are feeling like, Kate, she asked me to be on this team, like, and she's running it. I felt weird letting someone else kind of run it. So we've opened up our own team page and we've been talking a lot about, um, doing obviously Emerald calls like pretty often. Um, but then also once we're ready with a couple of Emeralds, um, doing like diamond push groups or diamond push chat groups or something like that. So connecting more closely with those Emeralds obviously, and like really like mentoring them on exactly what we did that worked for us to get us to diamonds. So right. that that's all I try to do is just keep it simple. Like what worked for me to get to diamond, I'm going to give you all my secrets and you know, whether it's promoting posts or what, even if it's not like the best answer that people <laughs> want to get, it worked for me. So Secret here it that. is. Yeah. Do it. That's fine. Yeah. yeah. Duplication is absolutely key. And when you go diamond, chances are you have maybe one builder, you know what I mean? Because usually your other Emerald is someone you signed up or a family member, yeah, if not yeah. both, if not both of them are, I mean, very yeah. rarely you have two Emeralds that are ready, mm -hmm. are gung-ho, let's go diamond. But um, that's all it really is, is just pulling in the people that are working and everybody has their place. So you can't, you know, let your other six or seven coaches on your team get you down because they're not running. Like you're never going to have every single coach running. I'm sorry. Like it's a, just like the invite game. One in 10 are probably going to say yes. Like one in 10 coaches on your team are probably going to be runners. So if you need five diamonds, you need, you know, at least 50 coaches type of a thing, which. Yeah. And that's why I realized like, just like setting those goals of how many, I need to add 25 coaches to my team every two months in order to have two team builders. Like that's crazy, right. but it's, it ha if I want to hit that goal of five star, like that has to happen. So right. that's what the reverse engineering like really helped me with was right. like understanding, like, I, I mean, like right now, honestly for diamond, I'm like barely holding on, but instead of worrying about that, I'm like, no, I just need to recruit a lot yep. more coaches and move yep. forward instead of worrying about if anyone's going to drop off, they right. are going to drop off right. because in the past they have like a lot of people cancel. It's just yeah. how it works. Yeah. Um, a lot of people go inactive. So instead of worrying so much about those girls, I'm like, no, I need to get new girls and find the five that are yeah. going to want this. Like I do. Yeah. So that so was watching stories and another one of my coaches that I spent too much time stalking, Amy Rada was speaking at super Saturday. I didn't get to go to super Saturday because I was in a, CPR training all day. Woo. Um, and anyway, so she was saying that her, her corporate mentor was introducing her. Maybe it wasn't her corporate mentor, but a corporate mentor was. And she said something that she recruited 270 something coaches in a year or something like that. And like, that's the stuff that you need to hear is the numbers because yeah, she went, when I started following her last year, she was like just a brand new five star, I believe. And then she just hit 15 star at the beginning of the year of this year. So she got 10 diamonds right in a year. And you're like, Oh my gosh, that's incredible. But it's like, mm -hmm. look at the legwork that she was doing. She enrolled almost 300 coaches and then only 10 of those 300 actually went diamond. So the numbers yeah. again, like it's, that's the mindset you have to have. And it's not like, Oh my gosh, that's a lot. Or, Oh, I can't do that. Or that's impossible. That's not the point of it. It's to keep you grounded and focused and like not every coach you sign is going to be a rock star. Cause a lot of people put all their eggs in one basket. Oh, I got a good feeling about her. Okay, cool. But let her prove to you that she's what, you know, match her pace. Like you always have to match her pace. So you don't um, burn them out because like you said, even you, like when you kind of went into that, 
warm market to cold market, you were like, ugh, like, I don't know if I even, and you're gung ho about this. And so for someone yeah. like you to be rattled. And that's why it scared me. Cause I'm like, there's a lot of people who are still kind of wondering, like I was all in and I still considered quitting. Like what's going to happen for the girls that exactly. questioned it in the beginning. <laughs> exactly. Yes. And then, so um, my other question, which you probably kind of already answered it, but maybe not is kind of, um, a rundown of like what your numbers are right now, as far as, <laughs> excuse me, for your goals, um, for inviting and like you lead with coaching invites, right? Yes. Like all the time. Okay. So with coaching invites, like what are your numbers for that? Like how many numbers are you, or how many invites are you aiming to get out every day? Or are you just solely boosting your posts and relying on applications? So to be honest, I haven't really set up a really good system with that yet, but like this year starting fresh, what I think I'm going to do is, well, getting that many applications that fast is it takes up so much time. And like I said, I reply back to their individual. I don't just go, you know, 60 applications came in today, send them all the same email. So I have to go through, a t it takes me so long. So honestly, I'm like, I don't have time to send out invites and I feel I was feeling so well, those guilty. are invites though. Those are invites. You're just, and so I started counting invites. them. Yeah. I yes. started counting them as invites because I was like, everybody's over here in the team page saying, Oh, I shot out 30 invites. And then I would feel bad because I didn't. And then I'm oh, like, those, that's how the top coaches do it. I mean, you look at how they run their social media and they'll say, Oh, I'm catching up on emails. They, I mean, they may send an invite to somebody who responds to a poll on their story or something yeah. like a very specific poll, but even they don't do a lot of polls on their stories. If you notice top coaches don't do a lot of polling of like, are you ready to join me? I mean, they will once in a while or like a sneak peek. They usually get them into a sneak peek first. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, mm -hmm. do you want to take a peek or they say, fill out my application because they're filtering them or they're boosting a post. Cause I get a lot of coaches in my um, sponsored feed of Instagram I do too. Yeah. Because they're, they're I've been noticing that too. And I'm like, okay, well, you know, they're pushing their posts like they're said, paying for it. Have judgments about spending money or promoting. Right. But to me, like I'm blown away that I can start a business and only put in $15 and 95 cents right. a month. Like I am completely willing to promote a post to, you know, the money always comes back and more. Exactly. So, it's like one challenge pack. You know what I mean? Like when exactly. I boosted my yes. post, it was, it blew up so big. I was like, and it wasn't even a call to action. I was just playing around with it to see if it would even work. And I think I did five bucks yeah. and it was like 10 times better than Facebook ever gave me for five bucks. And I was like, what did I do? Like, it's like hashtags are bold or I don't even know. Like I was like, what? And then I got rejected one time for my verbiage or something. And it was like a call to action. I'm like, okay, I need to really like study this and figure out how to maximize. And then I would see like Michael Folsom, um, Melanie Mitro, Ashley Molstead, Janelle Summers, their sponsored posts like show up in my feed and they're nothing amazing. It's like a homegrown photo of them. It's like not even super cute. And I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, that's interesting choice. And then the verbiage is just so basic. And I'm like, oh, I know. Oh. I see him and I'm like, what? Like, right? I mean, You're like, I think they, like, anybody can do it. Anybody yeah. can do it. Yep. And that's what I love is it's duplicable. Like, we can teach yes. it to our, you know, our new coaches. And even though it's not the sexiest answer, like, hey, yeah. you got to promote your post, it actually kind of is because is. I think it's like, <laughs> oh, I don't have, you know, it's, it's better than telling somebody they have to sit and, have 60 new conversations yeah. to start in a day to me. And so that's what, what's been working and I'm hoping it'll continue to work. Yeah. Um, Alyssa, I love your comment here too, about, um, people saying no and canceling. Like I just learned that and it is huge. It, it just makes you want to keep moving. You see it as like moving forward instead of like, crap, that girl canceled. Like I finally, I think I've probably added like 30 coaches since I started and not a lot of them have stuck around and I'm like I can't change that there's nothing it's nothing I did like I'm doing the same thing for all the ones that are staying so it's not me it's them and it's just inevitable like it's gonna keep happening it's yep. it, it is so but also know it does get better too when you cultivate a culture within your team you know your your tribe and create friendships and connections and success partners of your downline and stuff. 
that really is the true beauty of it. And that's going to help people be lifers or they're, it's going to help them stay longer or cause they're there for really the community at the end of the day, you know, they want the connection and, and the support. And if you have, you know, either a team page or, um, what do you call it? A challenge group to have them feel that then I think that significantly increases your odds. But when you're a brand new coach, it takes time to build that or to partner. Like you said, you're with your success partner. Is that the girl, the fit rabbit or yeah. Is from the UK. Yeah. Yes. Um, when you partner with someone like that and you go together, it makes it more fun because you have a buddy there, like a battle buddy to do it with. Yeah. And you, yeah. um, it's all about vibe. Like you could have four people or you could have a hundred people, but if your vibe isn't strong and people don't feel comfortable or confident within that, then it's, it's going to crumble. And that's something that we all have to kind of cultivate on our own. But just ask yourself, why am I still a coach? You know what I mean? Like why? Mm -hmm. And I mean, I think you're doing an amazing job of, um, attracting people just like you too. Like it's, it's evident. And like you said, you're going to put out there what you wanted to see when you were in corporate America, miserable, like everybody else on this call needs to put out what you would want to see as that stay at home mom or working mom or new mom or soon to be mom or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And just speak to that. Don't speak to the person who you are today because odds are they're probably not going to be interested, but who you were before you started coaching is your target market of who you want to draw in. And they're not all going to be Claire's. I'll tell you that. But when you do find one, they're gold. And like, can you guys imagine having someone like this on your team who just signs up and is like, has that fire on their own? But that's why I'm like, there are people out there and yes. that's what keeps going like there are people like me who who just want this like I mean yeah like I just got in and I saw something and that's why like when I sign up new coaches I'm like sending them the same videos I watched when I started because I'm like maybe it was something in one of these videos that triggered me. <laughs> I don't know so I'm just gonna send like trying because something clicked for me it was right for me, I think seeing the top coaches and their success, and I'm, I'm the kind of person that's like, if she can do it, so can I. Like, I already know I'm going to get there. That's 26, awesome. I'm not going to give up on this. So, it, you know, and that's what I hope other people will see. And there are people out there who are like that. Right. And I wanted to say, too, you were talking about, um, like, creating that sense of community. That, and I also figured out that, like, being successful yourself and like not being afraid to share that I am not the kind of person who would ever like I went diamond and I'm not the kind of person who would want to post about that but I kind of was more motivated to go diamond because I knew I had a ton of coach applications I had just replied to a right. sneak peek I was putting people in and I was like if they see that I just ranked up and I make a big deal of it because it is a big deal mm -hmm. that and I think that has helped create so much success so it was like a motivator for me to hit diamond it was also really cool to post and like the girls were commenting on that post. Like you guys know, usually when you're doing a sneak peek, you're like, if someone from the sneak peek comments on something, you're like, well, like that's yeah. exciting. She's really looking at my stuff. Right. This is going to help like me going diamond and them seeing it is going to help. So right. Put, set yourself little goals, like so that you can post about it and show people like Share, I'm yes. good. you can do good too. That's so funny because I have an actual goal this year or an intention, I guess. Um, to shout out my coaches, whether they're diamond or they're just showing up in their business on a regular basis, like in my stories and tag them so that they can even just reshare that to their audience. Cause I think yes. when we toot our own horn, it can kind of come off as a little icky sometimes. And I, it's okay yeah. to do like, don't get me wrong. You yeah. want to be excited and like share your success. But when you can share somebody else talking about you or like a post or a story, or like when my girls went diamond, it was like 75 stories, but I wanted to bring people along on their journey of like, you know, um, yeah. the meaning behind it all or whatever. And they got, they shared those back on their, you know, stories. And I'm not saying it's going to get them, you know, 17 coaches or anything, but on a consistent basis, like, why do we only do this on rank days? Like that's mm -hmm. so not right. Like why not do it just yeah. because it's Friday and I want to give her some love, you know what I mean? And like give her something yeah. to share in her story, like before a sneak peek or before she puts up a call to action or something like give her, give that person something to share. And so that is as crazy. You said that because that is on my intention of just recognition in general and just being more intentional about recognizing people for the little things that 
we easily look over, but if you don't do them, you're not going to get to the big things exactly. and that's what, the hard things that, that matter most. So, yeah. yes. So any last questions for Claire? She has been on over and beyond what I asked her to. So thank you so much for that. Of Let me check the chat. I don't think there's anything else in the chat, but I am going to end the recording in a second, but don't hop off. Okay. Everybody don't hop off. Are we good on questions? No questions? Okay. I'm going to end the recording. Oh, oh, Kelly and Aaron. Oh, and everyone's saying thank you. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Do you have a question, Kelly, or no? I saw you raising no. your hand. Okay. Just saying thank you. We okay. talk with our hands. <laughs> I'm a hand talker. I, just okay. wanted, to, I wanted to make sure that you uh, felt my thanks. <laughs> Aw, thank you. This was awesome. Thank you so much. Okay.